kind of stand here, I think, um, so. All right. Thanks. Yeah, we're okay. Guys, all set? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming here today. Uh, first off, I just want to thank several people that are here today to talk about this very important issue. Senator Darling will be speaking here in a few minutes. She is the lead person in the Senate for this very important bill on breast density notification. A constituent of mine, Gail Zemer, will be speaking about her personal story. A friend of hers had a very similar situation. Ann Zellner will be here as well. And Representative Mary uh, Falskowski is here in support of the bill as well. I wanted to thank all of them for being here. I also wanted to thank the Medical College of UW-Madison. Their radiology school was very helpful in educating myself, my staff, other legislators about, what this, about this bill and the issues that it's trying to address. So now that, well, now that I'm going to, now I'll go into the bill. Simply put, the breast density notification bill, it requires radiologists to inform patients if they have category three or four dense breast tissue. Currently, when a mammogram is done, there's four levels of breast density. Levels three and four are considered higher density than levels one and two. And why is that important? The denser the tissue, the harder it is for a tumor to be recognized. If you look at the screen over here, you can see there's that white spot on a breast tissue that is less dense, and it shows up fairly well. Can you imagine trying to find that little white spot in a highly dense tissue example that's on the side over there? I think a picture is worth a thousand words in this particular situation. It's like trying to look for a baseball in a snowstorm. So I think if you think of that analogy, that's what uh, the issue is trying to address. The second part is that once the patient has been notified that they do have dense tissue, then it encourages them to discuss that with their doctor to determine if additional screening tests in addition to the important mammogram would be necessary. Options could be a 3D mammogram, an ultrasound, or an MRI. All can do a better job of detecting tumors in dense tissue. A couple of other key points before I turn it over to Senator Darling. 40% of women have dense tissue, that category three or four, that is considered a higher risk of a missed, di a missed diagnosis. Also though, dense tissue in and of itself is a higher risk category for breast cancer. So women who have denser tissue have a greater chance of developing cancer just because of that phenomenon. So there's two significant risks. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Senator Darling, and then we're gonna hear from our constituent, uh, Gail Zemer. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rorkast. I'm very uh, honored to be here today with this distinguished group of individuals advocating for dense uh, breast cancer notification for, for dense breasts. 
I think many of us don't have any idea by, about why this would be such a problem, but if uh, you remember, breast cancer is a huge issue, especially in Wisconsin. 12% of women will get breast cancer. I am a survivor. Uh, Representative Falskowski is a survivor, and Gail and Anne are survivors. We're very blessed to have the health care that we have in Wisconsin. But what we need is this bill because early detection is the secret to getting good treatment, getting high survival rates. Just want to go over a little bit of the statistics. I mentioned that breast cancer is the most common cancer among U.S. women. It's the second most leading cause of death. Heart disease is the first. So this is a huge medical issue for women, and it's a huge issue for women who are mothers and wives and sisters and friends. It's a, it's a disease that touches all of us. If I mention that 12% of women born today will be diagnosed, the scope of that issue is huge. It's one out of eight women. And if you look at the Department of Health and Social Services, they'll say that 4,730 women in Wisconsin have been victims of breast cancer. So if early detection is the key to survival, and if one has breast density issues, we need to notify these women that they have to t do due diligence, that a simple mammogram for someone like the, the person on the right is, is easy to detect. But if you have tissue that uh, Representative Roarcast mentioned, three or, f or four level, you're going to have very difficult times identifying a lump. And that's why it's very important that women understand that breast density is a huge issue if you're being treated or diagnosed or being examined for breast cancer. So we're here today advocating for this bill that women should be notified and it will make a huge difference and you'll hear from others about, especially Gail, about why this is so important. So Representative Rorkas, I really want to thank you for your leadership on this bill. Gail, I want to thank you for being so brave to come and tell your story. And uh, of course my buddy, Representative Felskowski, <laughs> is a major survivor as you are too, all three of you. So I'm very proud to be a part of this group advocating for this bill. Thank you very much. Great, great. Thank you, Senator. Gail talked to me, I think it was almost a year ago, and brought this issue to my attention. I did not know very much, I did not know anything actually about the issue of dense tissue. And that though started when I heard her personal story, which you're going to hear right now, you will see, I think, and find it very compelling, as I did, to start to do the investigation work. That's why we went to the UW Medical School. We've worked with the radiologists. We've looked at what over 30 other states have done that have done similar type legislation, all designed to improve preventative care and to, to increase or to speed up the potential detections of tumors. But enough on that, I want to introduce Gail Zimmer, and she will uh, talk to you about her personal journey. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rorkast, for inviting me here today for the opportunity to tell you about my cancer journey briefly uh, and my desire to ensure that all women in Wisconsin are made aware of their breast density. I was diagnosed with stage 3C breast cancer in February of 2016. It was shocking and terrifying as any cancer diagnosis would be, but it was also incredibly unexpected as I was a faithful patient um, and I had average risk uh, for breast cancer, meaning I didn't have a direct uh, family member who had ever had breast cancer before. I followed all the recommended preventative screening protocols. I had a mammogram every year at the same time and then six months later I would follow up with a regular gynecological exam, so my breasts were being, ex were being looked at every six months. What, I, what was never mentioned to me in all of this time was that I had dense breasts, which it turns out masked my nearly four centimeter tumor over the course of, over, of nearly two years. So my breast density was similar to the breast density on the right, and they just couldn't find the tumor. I even asked for and paid for, out of pocket, a 3D mammogram in January of 2016. This screening tool is considered the gold standard for women and it in fact does have the capacity to find more tumors sooner. However, that was not the case for me. My radiologist eventually told me that finding my tumor was like looking for a polar bear in a snowstorm. I immediately thought, why was I never informed of this incredibly important information about my breast health? 
I spent a lot of time researching breast density as I was going through six rounds of chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, 30 rounds of radiation, and targeted chemotherapy for the past year. That's when I found that other women, like my new friend Anne, um, who is from the Milwaukee area, uh, have there's many of us, like Anne and I, who have been uh, diagnosed with late stage uh, breast cancer due to tumors being missed based on my, our breast density. I found out at that point that Wisconsin was not a state that required women to be informed about their breast density, so I contacted Representative Rorkast and I asked if he could help me change this. Uh, Representative Rorkast understood very quickly that legislation like this would offer equal access for women to early detection of breast cancer. Women need full notification of their breast health in order to make informed, educated decisions about their screening options that are available to them. The only way to know if you have breast cancer, by the way, is to get a mammogram. And this very important screening tool has proven to be the first line of defense for early breast cancer detection. But for women like Anne and I, nearly 40% of women in Wisconsin, we do not have this early detection luxury currently. We need to do better, and I know Wisconsin takes women's health care very seriously. Notification and education of all risk factors for breast cancer, including breast density, will empower women and save lives through prevention of late stage diagnosis. Thank you. Great, thank you. I think that um, really that story says it all. This is about prevention, this is about women's health. And with that, be happy to take any questions um, or either for me uh, or from Senator Darling or Gail, maybe if you'd be willing to answer a question or two. Once a woman is notified um, that they have a, a dense breast, what, what then if the doctor isn't willing to hear you? In your case, you got the 3D mammogram. I mean, is the hope that a doctor would then prescribe Right, so um, currently women are, there's many uh, breast screening centers in, this, in the state that offer 3D mammograms, which we would highly recommend a 3D mammogram. Um, and after that, if you, were, if you ask about your breast density and you are given a, either told that you have heterogeneously dense or extremely dense breasts, then really talking with your doctor about other screening options would be your best bet at this point. And those options currently include ultrasound, which can be a handheld ultrasound, but there is new technology coming through now um, for full breast ultrasounds actually in Wisconsin. And um, also a breast MRI would be another option. I know there's also new technology coming through for quick breast MRIs, which will be very exciting. Um, currently that's not available, but we're hoping for that soon. But yes, those two options are available. And just because you have um, dense breast doesn't mean you're gonna get cancer. You just get at a higher risk. So additional screening tools would be um, an excellent option for a woman. Any idea if the other, I mean, I know mammograms are generally covered by insurance. Any idea if the other things we're talking about are generally covered by insurance? It kind of depends. Uh, some insurers, it, it could depend on certain things. Uh, some insurers may cover the additional test. It could also depend on how they're coded or how it's then presented to the insured company, if whether it's a uh, an insurance company, or maybe it could be a private employer self-insured health care plan. So some tests could be covered, some may not be. I, I think the, and that's no different from other procedures that may, there could be, some are covered, some may not be covered. But this puts the information back into the hands of the patient, of the woman, to talk with her doctor and to determine if additional uh, tests would be warranted. Um, I'm a former HR person that had to set up health care plans. With what I've learned, I would, have, I would be advocating that our plan would cover these kind of additional tests. And that's where I think the industry, healthcare industry is going. This is newer, uh, a newer issue, but where they're going is they want to develop or devote more resources toward preventative care, and that's what really this is. This will save a, a significant amount of money if they can diagnose this in stage one versus stage three that uh, Gail experienced. So that's the that's the that's the trade-off that we that we need to constantly look at. But again, um, we we're giving the individual that ability to determine what's best for them in conjunction with talking with their doctor. Is your hope to get this through yet this fall, or what, what's your? <clears throat> 
Our, yes, we would like to get it uh, through this or in early January, yes. We want to get it in this session. We think we've got a good amount of support that's building for it. So, so why is Wisconsin not one of the 31 states? The release mentions this federally mandated summary of mammography results. Are patients in Wisconsin not getting that, or does it not address dense it, breasts? It doesn't specifically address the if they're in those higher risk categories. It doesn't explain to the uh, patient what that means, basically. Right. What the, the letter that a woman gets after she has a mammogram is usually handed to her like on a postcard or given um, sent to her in the mail a few days after a mammogram, and it, it basically says everything's okay, see you in a year. But this notification would then be attached, would be on that um, federally mandated letter that we all get anyway. So yes, women of Wisconsin are getting that letter, but it's not mentioning anything about their density. Why, why is that? I mean, it seems like the physician is remiss in not stating that to you. I, I, where is the disconnect here? Why? Well, why? that's why we're putting the legislation forth. I mean, we, we want to, uh, this is, um, I mean, I, I think we have to be careful not to criticize the, the healthcare community. They're always learning just as we are. And uh, this is, a, this is a, an issue of education, not just for women and their own health, but it's also an education of the healthcare community. And this, ha and I, again, going back to setting up healthcare plans, there would be new treatments, new, new medications that would come out all the time and you would have to then make those determinations. So you constantly have to be educating everybody on health care issues. This one, it came to my attention and uh, in talking with others, uh, as Representative Felskowski, who has went through it, uh, and Senator Darling, I've talked to others and practitioners, radiologists, who are very supportive of this legislation because they want to ensure that that education happens, not just for the patient, but for the doctors as well. So uh, a normal, um, an MD may not have this latest information that a radiologist would have. Shouldn't it be on them, though, to uh, especially, you know, we've got a hospital like the UW, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're supposed to be educated. They're supposed to um, have that top knowledge. It, uh, again, we're, this is, everything's a process of when an, an issue comes up, then how do you deal with that? This is one way of, uh, of um, educating that. Senator Darling? I think we're just saying there should be more emphasis put on the, the individual not just having the professional have the information. So we're saying the professional should be able to make judgments like that, but we, we think that the consumer of healthcare, the person should have access to that notification and that knowledge because, you know, why do you want to get, hand over the, the future of your healthcare to just your professional? Why? I think most people want to take control themselves of what's happening to their body. And I think we're into a more consumer-driven healthcare uh, history. People want, think they should know more, they want to have access to information, they want to be more in charge, and they want to get coordinated care. So I think this puts the uh, woman in the driver's seat to be able to get notification and have more access to ask better questions. When, when your diagnosis happened, you obviously went back to your physician and had the conversation. Did you say, I have been dealt I have taken control of my health care. You dropped the ball. I mean, it's what it, the scenario you are putting forth. It's hard to it's hard to conclude otherwise. Um, well, all I have to say about this is there's four women standing here that are mm -hmm. still alive because of the competent um, mm -hmm. cancer care that we received, and I am really really grateful for the doctors that helped me. And, um, and for the doctors who saved my life and all the research that went into, um, every breast cancer is a little bit different, but there's a lot of research going into, the, um, into breast cancer right now. And I know that there's at least one drug that's pretty new that saved my life. I wouldn't be standing here today without Herceptin. And so um, that's probably what I want to say about that. I, I did get really good care. One question I have, you know, when this came up in our newsroom today, there were a lot of women who had never heard of breast density. Had you guys ever heard? I mean, is that common that women have not even heard of this before? Anybody wants mm -hmm. to? Absolutely. You know, I want to address a couple things I sit here and listen. I was diagnosed with breast cancer my first time at age 40, and I did not have to do chemo or radiation, but I ended up with a double mastectomy. I had a double mastectomy, and at 50 was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Wrap your head around that. 
how could you have a double mastectomy and have breast cancer? It was a fluke thing. There was a mammary lymph node, and I ended up with that. Were my doctors negligent? No. No. Sometimes things happen. And like Gail said, everything is different. Everything is different. And you know, we get, we get complacent, and we're going in for our exams, and we're doing our mammograms, and we're doing this. And I look back, and did my doctor talk to me about breast density? Yeah, probably with my first or second mammogram as an educational piece and stuff. And then all I ever looked at was you don't have an issue. So this takes complacency away from us once we are diagnosed with breast, dense breast tissue. And as Senator Darling said, it puts you in the driver's seat. It makes you more diligent of the risk. You know, I was then genetically tested six different ways because of having breast cancer twice. My mom had it twice. I mean, it runs in our family. I don't carry the gene. So to try to place blame on why certain should be doing this or do, doing that, it's, healthcare is not static. You know, it consistently moves. And I just, I just thank God every day for the plane ride that put me in so much pain I ended up in the emergency room that that's how we found out I had a seven centimeter tumor. So this is literally saying, you know what? Our healthcare professionals do an amazing job. I was treated at the Carbone Cancer Center here in Madison, and I credit Dr. High for me being in front of you today. But they can't, they can't catch everything. We need to own it, and we need to be empowered, and this is empowering us to ask the right questions and to continuously be diligent. Because I know it changes... I mean, I have a lot of friends that have had mastectomies, and now they're looking at me going, you got breast cancer stage four after. The protocol isn't there to have mammograms after you have a mastectomy. But now we, these women are now empowered to know, I might have to do a little bit more due diligence. It's empowering women, not placing blame on the medical field. I would add, in, um, in our education process of trying for myself, my staff, to understand this issue. When we talk to the UW Medical School, we talk to radiologists, we talk to doctors. They, they did say that this is a newer issue, that this has come up. This is not something, this is, it's, it, the education is getting better every day. And that's why we wanted to come out again with this bill. We thought that it was very important. Many of the radiologists that, uh, that I've spoken to or that we've talked to are very supportive of the bill. Uh, when, we, when, I le when we left the medical school, uh, the radiology professors there, I, I think I asked them a question. I said, is there any reason that we shouldn't do this notification bill? And they all looked at me like they didn't say a word other than they were just shaking their head yes, if, if, that, if I remember that correctly. But that was basically the response that they were given. They need help as well. And this, again, it puts the information back in that patients are as responsible as doctors in many respects for their own health care. So this is a continuing education process for everybody, and that's why, this, that's why we're bringing it forward. And uh, I'm just glad, and I want to thank Gail and her friend for bringing this to my attention, uh, and not just not for me, but bringing it to our attention here in the legislature. We're trying to now deal with this, and we're working with the healthcare community and encouraging them to support this as well because we believe that this is important to early diagnosis which will save lives it will actually improve health care outcomes it will reduce the need for more aggressive surgeries the use of chemo um, other drugs that may have more troubling side effects so ultimately it will also save money but most importantly it's going to save lives and I'm so glad that the four lives here were saved by our health care community You know, the, if, if Wisconsin becomes the 32nd state, let's say, is there any any chance that this could... It could become, there is a federal, uh, there, I, I believe there's been work at the federal level, but it's not moving anywhere. Right. So I guess I'm not willing to wait. Uh, and I don't think Wisconsin will, women should be no, willing to wait you. for our federal government at this point. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned insurance, you would advocate for insurance covering those additional screens. <laughs> That's not in this bill, correct? That would correct. be something in the future. Um, I, it, we would not want to mandate. I mean, that's something I don't. But this is. I mean, I would. I would be a proponent of that as a, as a legislator, as a former HR person. I think that 
if I was, again, if I was setting up my own self-insured health care plan with what I've learned about this issue, I would be encouraging, or if I was a decision maker, I would decide to cover these additional tests. Again, though, I, I, we need to work this as an education process, and hopefully then more insurance carriers will cover this without any, any complications. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Feel free if you have any questions, come up and see us, thank or you. Gail might you'd be willing to talk as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank